Hey there, it's Dr. Kamisa. Welcome back to our video series. And today I got some great stuff to share with you about focused shockwave from Stortz Medical. So if you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button, share us with your friends, turn on your notifications. I got lots to share. So today we're talking about shockwave, but not radial shockwave because I already done a, I have already done a video of this before. I'll put a link of that below so you can see in the, some of the different videos we have with that. But today I want to talk about our new purchase, our new piece of equipment from Stortz Medical called Focus Shockwave. And so I've got I want to explain, you know, how long this has been around, about the research on it how it works, give you some analogies, show you some pictures, and then why we, why we decided to add this and make the complete set of the radial and the focus shockwave. So stay tuned. So let's talk about shockwaves and when did shockwaves really start? Well, if you're watching a World War II movie and you're seeing the destroyers roll those big barrels off the back of the off the ships, off the destroyer ships to sink a submarine. They're setting the depth charge on, the, on that big canister and as it goes into the water uh, it creates this explosion and that explosion creates this in incredible shock wave. Obviously you've seen the guys in the submarine being knocked around or whatever happens, you know, but uh, that's an extreme form. We're going to take a more medical approach. So we're going to be talking about focus shockwave. So when did focus shockwave start? Well, the first focus shockwave started in 1980, where that's the first machine they used, in Munich, Germany, and that was for a kidney stone. They, and it was a big machine, you'll see a picture here, and uh, that's when they blasted up a kidney stone. That same technology, the lithotripsy or focused shockwave energy, is still used today. The machine looks a lot different, a lot more uh, uh, advanced. Uh, but that was 40 years ago. It was 1980. So think about what you were doing in 1980. Well, I was just getting ready to graduate high school. In fact, I graduated high school in 1981. 40 years ago. That was a long time ago. Crazy, long time ago. But anyways... So 1980 was the first uh, machine they used, and later that year was the first research article based on that procedure. 1985, they used the same uh, focus shockwave for gallstones, and then it evolved. And then in 1996, Summer Olympics uh, in Atlanta, and that's when Stortz Medical sent over their first unit to treat the Olympic athletes for recovery and repair. 1996 and 1999 was the development of this, the radial shockwave. So Focus has had almost 20 years on radial. So more or less, right, from 80, 80 to 19 years, 19, 20 years, whatever that may be. So, and then today, obviously, we have this unit today, the Focus unit, which is FDA cleared in this country. They've been using it for a long time in Europe, but uh, we always seem to be behind the times here. So, but anyway, so now I'm gonna get into uh, some of the research behind it. So now we're gonna talk about some of the research uh, behind this unit. You know, it's new to us, it's new to the States. I get patients asking about research. I've had physicians asking about research and People don't really want to read research. Most people don't even know how to read research. They just want to know that it's been done. So, 19, like I mentioned earlier, 1980 was the first paper. And then there was a period of 30 years from about 1988 to 2018 where they were publishing uh, articles on shockwave, focus shockwave, radial shockwave, uh, to the tune of anywhere from 150 to 250 papers a year, give or take the year, give or take the whatever that may be. But that was, you know, so that was a 30 year and that takes us up to 2018. And in that total, there was 
about almost 1,400 papers written on focus shockwaves, so almost 1,400 on this guy, and about 250, 260 papers written on radio shockwave. I mean, that's a lot of papers on a technology, and most of these came out of Europe or Asia, and then if I look at certain conditions and research by the numbers, the number one topic researched for um, shockwave and focus shockwave is plantar fasciitis at almost 240, 250 papers, somewhere in that neck of the woods. We have the shoulder at over 200 papers. We have the elbow at about 100 and just over 100 uh, papers. And the same thing for the Achilles. So those four conditions, plantar fasciitis, the shoulder, the elbow, and the Achilles, are the number four conditions that have been researched with focus, shockwave, or a combination of focus and radio. So now I want to talk about how it works. So stay tuned on that. I'm going to go through and break it down for you. Hello there. Whoa, what's wrong with my vision? Something's wrong with my vision. Whoa, oh, it's a magnet. Hey there. I have a magnifying glass. What am I doing with a magnifying glass? What's a magnifying glass got to do with a focus shockwave, you ask? Well, as kids, we always played or we played with a magnifying glass, right? And you held it over a, a piece of paper. Or you, as kids, we were dumb enough to hold it on our hands and burn your skin. And so what was that actually doing? What was that doing? That distance between your hand and the magnifying glass what were we doing? We were focusing energy at a certain distance to a point. And where that point was, was where all the energy is. What a novel idea. What a great idea. Huh. What a great idea. That's what this is. That's what this does. Pretty sophisticated magnifying glass if you look at it that way, but it's the same principle in essence. It's magnifying energy coming out at a certain distance. So I'm going to cover that. All right there. So here's the focus unit. You can see there's a pretty beefy cord. Unlike the radio, which is run through an air compression system, this inside this cable is a high voltage cable and two water tubes. And so what actually happens, I'm going to see if you can see inside here. And if you look inside, you're going to see, so there's the ring on the outside. In the very center there, that's a little cylinder. And that cylinder, the wires, the high voltage cable that is inside here, goes into that cylinder and charges that cylinder up. Now, I don't know if you can also see, but there is, and I'm going to show you some pictures just in case, but there is a bowl shape. It's a bowl shape, a parabolic bowl shape. With, and my thumbs would be where that cylinder would be in the center. And I'm going to show you some pictures. But what actually happens is that this high voltage cable sends energy into that cylinder. The energy in that cylinder charges up and then gets released. And then, then it gets bounced off these reflectors inside this, inside here. And then the energy gets reflected through water outside the tube here. And you're going to see now on a picture where the energy is focused, the center of that energy beam, like we're talking about the, like talking about the magnifying glass, is focused 50, that's 5, 0, 50 millimeters from the actual end of the focus unit. So that's about 2 inches for the center portion of that beam. And... So that center portion of the beam can go all the way up to almost five inches in depth by the time that wave is finished. So that's how far, and you're going to see some pictures here, but that's how far the energy can travel up to five inches off of here. And now I'm going to show you how we control that energy for different types of tissues. What you're seeing on the screen here, I'm going to show you a picture of the attachments. And on the left hand side here, you just see a fastener. The middle is a gel filled 
Uh, they're called the standoff. And you can see the one in the center is larger than the one on the right. And when we actually measure these, you can see that the smaller one is about 15 millimeters. And the bigger one is about 35 millimeters. Why is that important? Well, you'll see on the diagram here, remember I said that the, the beam coming out of the end of the focus unit is the center of that beam is at 50 millimeters or about two inches. And so when we have the first standoff that is uh, 15 millimeters in size, then what happens is that beam now is focusing at 30 millimeters. And if we have the other standoff, the larger one, it's focusing at 15. Why is this important? Well, let me explain to you why we need these standoffs and why they're important in focus shockwave. So we're looking at the focus unit here, right? We need to be able to target different tissues. And you're gonna see, we did a video on the shoulder and I'll put a link to that below, but we wanna, so imagine if this is coming out and now we're gonna put the standoff on top of this and you're gonna see just how much that standoff takes up off the energy beam. So if we need to be more superficial, we wanna use this. If we want to go really deep, we don't want anything. We want to get maximum depth of that energy beam going into the tissue. If we're in between, well, that's where the standoff number one comes in, where it cuts down the beam but still allows me to get to a certain depth. So different tissues have different, obviously, and we can measure that with the ultrasound that's over here, different tissues are at a different depth. So we can target exactly 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 how deep we need to go and so we can tar just like that magnifying glass right we want to target that tissue we want all that energy to end up at that target tissue because that's where the healing takes place that's where all the growth factors take place that's where all the the different effects take place from the shock wave and i'll cover that but that's why we have these different standoffs so that we can truly target the tissue uh, that is in question and needs to be healed. Before I go over the kind of conditions that we can treat with the shock wave, both the radial and the focus shock wave, let's go over and just review what the shock wave, why do we use shock wave in the first place? Well, decreases pain, decreases inflammation, improves new or improves existing blood flow creates new blood flow, stimulates the growth factors, like we're doing a, a baby PRP, stimulates fibroblasts for healing, stimulates the stel stem cell production. It does a lot of different cellular changes, and this is, so basically what we're doing is we're putting mechanical energy, that mechanical energy is being trans transmitted into the tissue, so it's being converted Mechanical energy is being converted to biological energy, and that biological energy is healing. It's repairing the tissue. And so when we look at this combination of both the focused and the radial shock wave, and you're gonna see a picture here of all the tips we have for the radial. And the reason we have all these tips is because of all these different conditions Every patient's different. Every patient has different needs. So it's kind of like having, you want to go play golf, you need to have all the clubs. You can't just play with a driver and a putter. And so between these two devices here, we can truly impact that tissue to heal. So now I'm going to cover some of the different conditions that are great for the combination of focus and radio shockwave. When we look at the combination of focus shockwave and radial shockwave and what kind of conditions we can treat, I like to say from, from toes to nose, nose to toes, right? Pretty much everything in between. And all the conditions that we do treat, all the conditions that uh, I would suggest for a patient, these are the articles that have been published in PubMed. These are the articles that have been researched like I covered before 
all those different researched articles, or I shouldn't say researched, but published articles. So, you know, like I said, you know, for plantar fascia, uh, there's over four, uh, 200, over 200 articles that have been published. And so, yes, from toes to nose, joints, soft tissue, plus wound he healing, plus, you know, chronic pelvic pain syndrome for both male and females. There's lots of different conditions, but they're all, every condition has evidence based. Every condition has been written up in research, published in PubMed. They have done studies, they have done, and that's where we get our protocols from. These are all protocols that have been tested, proven for the best results, for the fastest results, for the best outcomes. So the question is, why would we invest in this technology? So, like I mentioned before, 30 years in practice, and I feel like we're just getting going. I feel like we're getting better all the time, and this is the kind of stuff that helps us be better at what we're doing. And so we look at people that are injured, or look at people that are struggling with their injuries, whether it doesn't matter how long they are, that they've been going, struggling for, is that we want to empower people to live their best day every day. And so we're using the best technology on the market today. Storts Medical is like Mercedes Benz. They come up with all these patents. They come up with all this incredible technology, incredible engineering to help the, the tissue and to help us be better at what we're doing to help you live the life you want to live. And so the shockwave therapy combination of the radio and the focus accelerates the healing process, accelerates the repair process, gets athletes back onto the field faster, gets you back into life faster. So as we're empowering you to live your best day every day, until next time, have a very blessed day. And don't forget to turn on your notifications, turn on your uh, uh, bells, and uh, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much. Have a blessed day.